Trash Cinema. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Trash Cinema. I am your host, Michael. My guest this week is Kersey. How's it going, Kersey? Doing pretty good. How you doing? All right, hopefully this time it'll take. Uh, listeners at home won't know that I screwed up the first recording, so wee, here we go again! All right, let's do this. <laughs> Uh, this week we'll be discussing two movies by Peter Jackson. His first two movies, in fact. Uh, I think they're really exciting, crazy energy. We're going to be discussing Bad Taste and Meet the Feebles. And uh, I was thinking, I was, I was thinking that you know, as he goes on with his career, he's becoming safer and safer. And I think, honestly, kind of boring now. I can't yeah, get through more the studio. Hobbit. <laughs> I can't get through the Hobbit or the Lovely Bones. Yeah, that was kind of the weird one about uh, the Hobbit. From I mean, I haven't watched. Uh, I was very uh, disillusioned by the Lord of the Rings series, so I didn't even get a chance to watch The Hobbit. And from what people told me, like the first uh, Hobbit movie was so great, they're like, "Oh, you don't even need to be a fan to enjoy it." And then, like all my friends who loved The Hobbit said, they hated the last one. Uh, I'll say this: I love Lord of the Rings. The trilogy to me is second. Uh, I think Back to the Future is the greatest trilogy than this. I know that's insane. No one else agrees with me, but uh, yeah. Lord of the Rings, is, I think, is really great. Uh, and then I got to The Hobbit, and I was like, what's going on? This book is, like, the size of, like, a Peanuts gallery book, you know? Like, uh, yeah. it, like what is it, 120 pages or something insane? Yeah, it was really small. And he padded it so much with other stuff, like, from The Similarian and whatnot, and it turned into three movies. It doesn't need to be three movies. In fact, when I watched The Hobbit, I've tried twice now. I cannot get past the first hour. I can't do it. Yeah, you know what? I saw the play of The Hobbit when I was a kid. Uh, uh, this is obviously before the movies came out. Yeah. Uh, and they did a play, and it was pretty accurate from what I've heard to the book, and they did that in about an hour. I just don't get it. There should have been one movie, at most two, and if he wanted to do something with the rest of the books, he should have just called it like The Chronicles of Tolkien or something like that, you know, like an anthology film. Yeah, that would work. Ugh, but it's too late now. We have to sit through nine hours of walking. More walking, talking, sitting around. Oh God, everybody looks the same. This sucks. Well, it, that's weird that you would say that you would say that because that's how I view Lord of the Rings. It's I know. Just... I don't know why. Maybe it caught me at that right moment. But I think there's a lot. Uh, the first one is a little slow, but it's the second and third one that just I think are really fast paced. I'm very much on the Kevin Smith side. Of, it's just a bunch of walking, and that's about it. Yeah. How much more of a? They look know, pretty. They look pretty. They they do they do look great. I have to admit. They look pretty fantastic. All right, so let's go back to the beginning of his career. Before King Kong. Oh, uh, yeah. Let's <laughs> uh, before the confusion of Frighteners. I actually like Frighteners, but there's moments that irritate me to no end. But he still had that crazy energy. Yeah, it's, that's accurate. His first two movies are really independent, low budget, and I would say epitomized trash cinema. Really uh. great, smart trash cinema. You know, you don't feel guilty watching it, but at the same time, you know you're watching something really off kilter. Yeah, it's the, especially, uh, we know what I was going to say, especially bad taste, but the more I think about it, Meet the Feebles might be a little even crazier. Yeah, uh, bad taste. Now, this is the one where you jump right into a, I like movies that you jump into their world instead of seeing it where the origins are. It's like all of a sudden you just plopped right down the action. Apparently, aliens are. Uh, going into humans, or they're wearing human costumes. What is? It? I've only seen this movie twice, so I forget. Yeah, they're wearing uh, human costumes, and they're attempting to take over the world by basically. Actually, that's not really what it is. They're actually using Earth to uh, harvest humans as meat. So yeah. it's kind of like turning uh, Earth into basically a giant uh, farm where they herd up humans and then they use them for like fast food burgers on other planets. <laughs> it's pretty fucking crazy. Yeah, so you, at first you don't know what's going on. These people are being uh, chased around. There's basically two protagonists in the beginning of it. And is there. One's, am I one wrong? One is Peter Jackson. One is Peter Jackson. Is he actually fighting himself? Is there a sequence where he's. Is he the guy with uh, the brain piece that falls out? Is that Peter Jackson as well? Uh, quite possibly. I, I know that, you know, this movie took four years to make. And. Uh, you can see there's a lot of different takes, um, and they basically just use the same four people to do every role. Yeah, it's really so, smart though. They made this movie for like a shoestring, like thirty five thousand or something like it, that. It was very cheap, yeah. Yeah, it's crazy, but there's a lot of uh, energy going on in it. Uh, of course, it is very low budget. It's in like the hills of New Zealand, where you know there's no real sets, there's no real actors, but 
the gore factor is off the charts. Holy yeah, it was. It's shit. the gore is still like I showed this movie in high school to a couple people uh, in my film class, yeah. and they were so horrified by like how gory it was and like how visceral it was. It sometimes like remember that in the first scene when um, his you know, he shoots part of his head off and then. You know, he like slumps down and just like oozes his brain onto his shoes. Yeah, it's like that was the moment they're like, I can't watch this anymore. Uh, I will admit to this: I have never finished Dead Alive. It makes me sick every time. Oh uh, man, I love that movie. I know, like, I want to get through it. It seems like the kind of thing I get through, but every time, especially the part where they pull the rat out of the mouth, you know, it's like, oh, whatever that oh, the is. Dog? The oh dog. yeah. Oh god, <laughs> I just want to throw up. Uh, the first one, of course, you got like. Uh, really good alien costumes, considering they had no money. I don't know how they did them; just good puppetry. Yeah. Uh, also, I believe uh, everybody in the alien costumes are again just the four main characters, basically fighting themselves. <laughs> Good editing, because you can really not, you really can't tell. I mean, the only time that I got suspicious was I was like, that sure looks like Peter Jackson without a beard fighting Peter Jackson with a beard. Yep, that happened. There is a scene in the movie that makes my skin crawl to the point where I almost want to throw up. I have to look away. Is uh, there's a scene towards the end. Where the good guys are pretending to be... Well, one of the good guys is pretending to be one of the alien creatures. And he's drinking the ooze? Yeah, dude. Uh, uh, Peter Jackson's character barfs out, like regurgitates every human thing that he has consumed. And it's all green and gross. And he barfs it up into this huge punch bowl. And then everybody goes around sucking it up. And as it gets to our uh, uh, the protagonist... Uh, oh, boy. I, my, I just like started like curling up like oh god don't do it and then he does it and he's like mm, that's kind of tasty <laughs> yeah well I thought it looked pretty tasty actually <laughs> I think it's the <laughs> idea the fact that it, 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 someone barfed it up and then it's actually just like the bone and grizzle of humans it did look like it was uh, steaming a little bit it was a little hot uh, there's really not much plot it, it's just basically uh, they try to get into their base they try to get free numerous times and there's just insane amount of gore but the thing that kills me is when uh, Derek. Uh, Derek has the best lines, too. Uh, yeah. Derek's never run. <laughs> uh, he has a part of his skull pops open. His brain flies oh, out. Oh, God. Steps. That's the worst part to me. Yeah, he steps on the brain. And then uh -huh. he decides to grab alien from the, or, well, some of the alien brains and shove it into his own because that makes sense. Yeah, exactly. And uh, wraps it up, whatever. But that starts to affect him. And he starts having, like, uh, alien tendencies. I think. Uh, I'm not entirely sure if he had alien tendencies. He did seem a lot more violent. Yeah, I thought that was the reason. I thought maybe he was just like crazy from it or something. Uh, but yeah, this is a public domain title because Peter Jackson didn't know how to file the paperwork properly. <laughs> yeah. So in America, you can find this on pretty much any. God, there's like a thousand copies of this movie. Yeah, the, yeah, basically. Uh, one another. Uh, one of the funny bits about that at the end when he uh, chainsaws through the guy. When he goes like through his head out of his ass. Oh my god, that was amazing. Yeah, what, what do you say? It was like if he's reborn or something. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like being born again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and they do the same joke in uh, Dead Alive at the end too. Huh, uh, I guess I had to finish it just to get to that point. Slightly different, but yeah, it was all gross. And uh, I, yeah, I fucking I love this movie. It is so ridiculously awesome that you just can't help but love it. Yeah, it's really over the top, and, it, and there's going to be some people who are not going to be, like, into this kind of movie, but if you love, like, Evil Dead 2 or The Deadly Spawn, you know, these, these uh, humorous, over-the-top, campy, but gore fest, you know, uh, Reanimator, you know, movies like that, you're going to dig Bad Taste. Yeah, I would say, especially if you love Reanimator, this is very much akin to it. All right, our second movie is Meet the Feebles, which I remember finding on the shelf this this came out right as I was getting into like cult edgy movies, and I saw this on the shelf when it says I think it says uh, the Muppets on crack, and I was like <laughs> oh, I gotta see it. So me and a friend got it, and we just had a hoot. It was a, it's a highly entertaining movie, insanely vulgar. <laughs> yeah, and at the same time, it does have kind of an interesting message to it too that doesn't hit you over the head. Uh, it's very much about just how uh, it, 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 you can kind of compare it to how Disney works, how it just sort of. Uh, it's difficult to explain, but it, how it, it just sort of uses up people and spits them out at the you know bottom of the industry. Right. It, you know this idea of this whole kid-friendly uh, front, but it really behind the scenes is kind of tragic. 
So it's a, it's a commentary on uh, like the kid shows, like the Mickey Mouse Club, that mm-hmm. kind of thing, where once you get to a certain age, we're just dumping you. And also at the same time, it's a play on Muppets, period. Just yeah, taking exactly. something that you're very comfortable with that's very family friendly and just making it the most twisted shit you've ever seen. <laughs> yeah, like the main star has got AIDS. Uh, and there's so much drug use. Lots of drug use. Uh, Vietnam flashbacks. Uh, there's puppets yeah. fucking. There's. You know what gets in my brain is the, the fly. That little fly reporter that bugs the shit out of the rabbit about his disease. Yeah. His voice is irritating for some reason, though. It just sits in your brain and just like, Ugh. Yeah, well, I, I was always able to rationalize that because it's supposed to be annoying. So yeah. I just easily... No, it's just, it's one of those voices, like, you find yourself hearing that voice later. <laughs> or maybe... That's your flashbacks. Yeah, and also, all week, I will say this. Meet the feebles, meet the feebles. <laughs> We're not your average, ordinary... People that is, it's been stuck in my head for four fucking days. <laughs> oh my god, it will yeah. not get out. Very catchy, great, uh, great little tune. Uh, you know what though? I always loved uh, the sodomy song. Yeah, that's a funny song uh, too. I also in high school showed everybody that one, and they <laughs> thought I was like the sickest person they've ever met. <laughs> I uh, I actually got confused. I rem- the second that song played, I remembered it, but I thought it was from a Monty Python skit, and I was like, "Wait, I thought this was from Meaning of Life." Shit, what? what? You know, this whole time I got confused, but uh, it's nice to clear that one up. The songs are great, though. They're really well written. It's uh, it's kind of the way uh, South Park. You know, they had a real guy come in and construct decent songs for an insane movie. Yeah. Uh, also, one thing I heard is that the machine gun that the hippo is using at the end, I realized that, you know, out of context, people think that this, this is like the stupidest thing they've heard, that a hippo is using a machine gun. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> from what I've heard, that uh, machine gun was actually real, and there was a huge uh, problem with it on set, obviously. Um, <laughs> yeah, they couldn't afford the blanks. Which is weird, because yeah. I would think that blanks would be more ex- or less expensive than actual bullets, but no, they actually used real bullets and destroyed tons of the set, and I, I don't know if people were in danger or what, but it seems like they would be. Oh well, yeah, of course, shrapnel and stuff like that. Uh, I would hope that there would be a lot of precautions there, but I guess no one was hurt, so... Well, yeah. back in the day, I, I noticed that a lot of the older movies, whenever they have shooting scenes, it always seems to be like, yeah, well, this is where they had buckshot, and we all had to make sure we ducked in time when we get our head blown off. You're like, holy shit, could you think of something else? <laughs> so, yeah, the dangers, especially of independent movies, you always hear crazy stories of those low-budget independent movies that have no money, and they just have to come up with whatever they can, and eh, it can be dangerous. Yeah, I, I, say, I say if you're going to use real bullets, you might as well... Um use them correctly like i think scanners used a real shotgun uh for the head blow up scene really a shotgun is what they used oh yeah i had no idea yeah that's a that's a good movie for trash cinema those movies are crazy i love all of them even scanner cop i didn't even know there was more than one. Oh, there's five of them uh, there's oh. the original one of course with uh um I have in the moment. David Cronenberg directed it, but then it sat on the shelf for 10 years until uh, a sequel came along. And so there was two and three back-to-back, like within like six months of each other. They were straight to video, and those did very well. And they decided a couple years after all that to spin it off into Scanner Cop, a cop with the power to move things with his mind. And the, the special effects are crazy. And then there was another one after that called Scanner's War, and that was it. Huh. That's, a uh, weird, that's a weird tangent. Sorry. I don't think I'm gonna watch. I don't think I'm gonna watch those. I mean, I liked the first one. I'm not sure if I liked it that much to be interested in trying to check yeah, out the. Other. Well, I'll say this: the first one is really slow. There's some great gore effects, and Michael Ironside kills it. But yeah. uh, it, the second, third one, they really decided to amp up the gore and uh, action. So uh, I always thought the first one was a little dull, especially the star. The star is so bland, so Canadian. Anyway, meet the peoples. Um, Sorry, that was. I, I'm not going to edit that out. If, if people, if you get the chance, go watch those scanner movies. Uh, our minds wander a bit. <laughs> uh, uh, meet the. You know, I used to apologize all the time, but I said, "Ah, screw it." <clears throat> uh, meet the Feebles, You know, that's the one where I think he got the uh, attention of the New Zealand Film Commission. They were going to fund it, 
but then they actually saw the final product. What they pitched, what he pitched them, and what the final product was were two different things. So they pulled their funding uh, during production, and I think that uh, they had to like wander around try to find someone to invest to finish it off. It was kind of a weird beast of a movie too. The uh, it, it very much played as like three different kind of movies in one, and for the most part, it, it, it I think it worked out really well. Uh, some of the parts that are supposed to be sad felt honestly a little sad, and the parts that were funny were pretty funny. Just the the one part that just felt that was just so off kilter was the end with the you know hippo using the machine gun, and having that like weird moment where she's singing. Yeah, I, I you know going from like that weird action scene that kind of didn't work, and then moving into like the uh, the tragedy of it was felt really weird, but I could like see what he was going for, and I think it might have worked, but. Uh, maybe for just using puppets, maybe it just doesn't evoke uh, the reaction. I don't think it's supposed to. Yeah, one of the things that uh, makes me uncomfortable about the movie, and I think it's because they shot it. It looks like it's shot in Super 16, uh, yeah. whereas uh, Bad Taste is really brightly lit. It could be shot in the same stock, but because it's all stage bound, it makes everything really dark and murky. I feel like I'm watching almost like a snuff film. Like I'm watching something I shouldn't be watching, something that would just play at grindhouses. It it, uh, it makes you feel a little dirty at the same time, like you're intrigued because you're not really supposed to be watching something like this. Yeah. And uh, the funny, I was looking. It says this was originally a TV series pitch. Can you imagine this uh, playing yeah. on television? Yeah, I remember. Uh, I remember reading that. As it, who is it for though? I mean, it's. I mean, all the characters are like really brightly colored. Uh, kind of felt this puppet so obviously kids will want to watch it but who the hell is going to watch that it would have to be something that like aired saturdays at midnight you know something That's... real culty unless they have like a cable station like hbo i can't imagine it ever would show in one of their networks i don't know what it's like in australia and new zealand what their whole setup is but in england you know they had especially during the 70s they always had like these late night cult shows that were just pushing the boundaries they have a little bit of nudity a little gore a little swearing and maybe they have that in New Zealand where Meet the Feebles was something they're really trying to push. But maybe once it went to a movie, they're like, well, now there's no restrictions. Let's go insane. Let's have uh, rabbits barfing, pus flying out their face, heads exploding, people having sex, just <laughs> huge hippo tits. Yeah, the disintegrating. What, that, didn't that dude's face or his whole body maybe disintegrated? What was he uh, sniffing Clorox or bleach or something? I Which character was it? That, I can't remember. Yeah, well, I can't remember. He was doing some kind of drug deal, the Walrus guy. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, and it went wrong, and that's when they dipped him. Yeah. The dip, just like in uh, Roger Rabbit. Yeah, that, that was great. Now, this sat on the shelf for six years before it came to America. Um, mm. You know, in 1989, that's weird. So, Southgate Entertainment, that was a, a distribution company in America. They always did, like, real low-budget directed video stuff. But I'm pretty sure they were out of business when this came out. I don't know who owns it right now. I think it's actually out of print. So if you can find it, go for it. But I, I saw it on YouTube. Yeah, you, you can find both of these on YouTube, especially Bad Taste because it doesn't have a copyright. Right. And uh, Dead Alive, I'm going to have to attempt to watch that someday. Yeah, I you should yeah try to sit through it as best you can because, it, I mean, it only gets gorier from there. Oh, great. Yeah, I do remember walking in at the end. A friend of mine was watching, and he had a lawnmower strapped to his chest, and he's taking out a bunch of zombies that way. Yeah, that's the end. That's, uh, what was it? I think there was, like, six different hoses in the lawnmower, and each one was pumping out, like, two gallons of blood. Oh, great. So, yeah, it's all over the place. Uh, there is so much, ama such, such amazing gore and in such different creative ways that it's just so fun to watch. Uh, if you can handle it, I mean, it is it is just all it's messy. It's all over the place. I think that uh, Meet the Feebles has now fallen under public domain. There's a lot of people putting them out on Amazon in their own little covers. The cover, by the way, is the hippo with the machine gun. <laughs> they oh, changed right. it. I like the original cover. This is really cheap and generic. Hmm. And... Uh, what is it you think that made him sell out? I don't know. More money, I guess. Maybe. I mean, isn't that the end game? I guess, I but at the same time, I wonder if he misses it at all. 
you know, the do-it-yourself kind of filmmaking. Well, I'm sure he does. I mean, he does. I, I would, I'm sure Lord of the Rings was a passion project for him in a lot of ways. But he, there are, uh, when you watch those movies, there is kind of uh, hints of his old style. Like, he does kind of have a style of his own that he uses, and he does try to incorporate uh, practical effects in his movies. And so it, it seems like there's a style that he really enjoys doing, but I guess he just doesn't like doing gore anymore. Maybe that's just kind of beyond him now. Though he does seem to have an interest in the ugly, you know, the unusual. He'll take something that uh, I think normal society or, or mainstream picture would treat as the villain, but he put a lot of heart into King Kong, as long and kind of boring as that movie is. And The Hobbit, you know, they're unusual creatures. He, he has a way of taking something that we might treat as, oh, that's such a poor little thing, but giving it a heroic edge, something to admire instead of pity. Like a hippo with a machine gun. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think that's it on Meet the Feebles for me. Anything else you want to say about him? No, I'm... Uh... Like I said, I'm a much bigger fan of Bad Taste, uh, but Meet the Peoples is definitely a good watch. Uh, I would definitely say for sure you got to watch uh, Bad Taste. All right. And for me, Meet the Peoples is what I prefer, so you win both ways. Both are up on YouTube. Check them out. It's totally free, man. No excuses. <laughs> and uh, that is it for us here at Trash Cinema. If you want to check us out, we are up on Facebook. It's a group instead of a page, so that way everybody can take part in uh, promoting or talking about any trashy movies that they admire or truly hate. This is a, an episode where we actually like both movies, which is kind of the trend lately. We first start off like just grabbing whatever movie we thought was shit and tearing it apart, but everybody does that. I like to find something that's kind of uh, forgotten, hidden away, and, and champion in it. All right. <laughs> Sorry, I, I didn't know if you were going to say anything. I didn't want to interrupt you. Uh, thank you, Kersey, for being on the episode, and everybody, uh, have a good night. All right, thanks for having me.